Hi, and um, welcome to this uh, demonstration about the glossary widget for Adobe Captivate. Um, the glossary widget is basically a widget that you can insert on your slides in Captivate, and uh, it will make a glossary, um, which is quite useful in a lot of courses. Um, it's n it's really been a missing part of Captivate, if you ask me, for basically all the versions so far. Um, and it's a, a project that I've been wanting to do for quite some time. Uh, it's a big project, so it took me quite a while to get to this point. Um, but now it's done, and um, this is a little demonstration of uh, of what the, the finished widget looks like. Um, this is a regular Captivate 5.5 project. Uh, works in Captivate 5 as well. And um, you can see I have uh, the blue letter selected up here. That's my current location. Uh, this is inactive. B is inactive. C is inactive. There's no content. D is active. I can click on D and I'll switch to that will switch the screen and will show all the words that start with a D here in the, in the left hand side and the explanation for the particular word that we have selected on the right hand side. Um, all the data is pulled from an XML file which uh, uh, you can edit as you please. You can format descriptions, you can add a lot of fancy stuff to them. If we switch to W, look at the word widgets, you can see we have some bullet points, we have some bold text and um, <coughs> there's no image in that one. Um, but basically it allows you to style and format your text just as you please. Um, you can insert images. Um, the image can be placed either at the bottom of the description text like here or it can be placed at the top of the description text um, which we have in this example here. Um, this is pretty neat stuff actually. Uh, what is even nicer is that you can insert flash animations. Um, so if we go to the animation part you can see I inserted a Swift here um, and this will actually play. Of course if you make some insanely complex Swift animation I can't guarantee that that will work but um, all the stuff that I tested so far works pretty well, so should should work for you as well. Um, anyways, there's two uh, designs to the widget. There's the black design, as you're looking at right now. And if we skip to the next page, you can see there's a gray design as well. Um, these two designs should make it possible for you to integrate the glossary in your own projects uh, and match the the colors of whatever style you have chosen pretty good. They're, they're pretty anonymous, both of them, so should be able to get it to work for you. Um, you can change the text colors of the title, the subtitle, the selected text here, the inactive letters, the active letters, um, as well as text color over here. The text color and text size in the description can be changed by adding some HTML tags in the XML file that uh, that the glossary uses. Uh, it's a bit more complex, but uh, it's possible. And in the help documentation, it's it's described how to do it. So it's, you should be able to do it, even though you don't have any previous experience or with w of working with XML. Um, if we take a look at the, how the Captivate project looks like, or what the Captivate project looks like, it's um, basically a simple slide. I put the widget in the middle of the slide. Here you go, and I put a button just to pause it. Um, it's just about regular Captivate slide without any fancy stuff. If we uh, double click to enter the widget properties, you have um, a number of different customization options here. Um, the XML name. The default is glossary.xml. Um, you can change it if you want to, or you can leave it at that. That's totally up to you. Um, the reason why you can define the XML name is that in some courses you perhaps would like to have more than one glossary. Um, and this means that you can insert multiple widgets that would each pull their own XML file, um, and allowing, thereby allowing you to have multiple glossaries. You can define an XML path and a location of images and assets. Um, the default is that there's no path and they're optional, so you don't have to enter anything. Um, on some LMSs or on some use cases, uh, 
uh, I've seen that Captivate uh, Swifts are being loaded by some PHP stuff, and this can cause the the paths, internal paths that widgets and Captivate uh, uses to change. Uh, therefore, you could uh, type a, a, a complete web route here, uh, so, so you're sure. Oh, let's see. You're sure that it would pull the correct XML file for you. Um, like that, and then just have the glossary XML located in a folder called XML on your server. The same is, is um, it's, it's totally the same for the location of images and assets. Uh, we'll just delete it, otherwise it won't work now. Um, the title, you can of course change the title to whatever you want, so I'll just say my new title here. Um, the subtitle is basically an instruction on how to uh, to use the widget for the user. Um, you can leave it at this or you can change it. You can switch between the two different designs. Um, for each of the two designs I have set up some uh, some default colors. Um, these colors match the the, uh, the templates so the I put some thought into it uh, so that it looked kind of good. Um, the graphics is actually done by another guy uh, called Ed Brown brilliant graphic designer, so uh, thanks a lot Ed. Uh, I'll be sure to post a link uh, back to your website as well. Um, but anyway, the, the default colors um, is what is used by default of course. You can deselect this and you will have the opportunity to select your own colors for selected text and can make the title some pink color here. There we go. Uh, we'll just leave the other ones uh, at the end. Uh, at, at their present colors. Um, there's a box down here called Override Text Color. Um, the reason why this is here, if we, if we take a look at text color here, this is the left hand side of the widget, the word list. You can change that to, let's see, this one, the red color here. Now the, the, the words in the left column where you have the, the list of words, they're in the red color. If you want to change the description text in the right hand column for each of the words uh, to the same red color, you could actually click this box here. However, this will not make it, this will no longer be possible for you to define specific colors in the XML description files anymore. So if you select this, all the text for your descriptions will be the red color. You cannot define some words to be blue color and some words to be black, etc., etc. Um, so, if if you think this will work for you, then go ahead and do it. Uh, otherwise, you can change the the text color uh, in the XML file by adding some font uh, HTML tags. Uh, we'll see that later in in uh, in, an in another video video, and you will see it in the documentation as well. So let's see. Let's say that this uh, looks good now. So we'll just click OK and the widget properties is updated. You are not able to preview the project um, and the widget in action by clicking F4 or anything like that or F12. So you're going to need to actually publish the uh, project <coughs> to ensure that uh, uh, the widget and the XML files and etc. are in the correct location. I'll just make it the wrong s right size here. Let's go. Yeah, it's pretty big, but I guess you get the idea. The idea. All right, so you can see the title has the the color we selected. The active letter is the yellow greenish color. Um, we have uh, the text here in our red color. Um, everything looks pretty good. So this is basically how you use the widget. Uh, what is important is that once you publish uh, your project, you will need to to copy. Um, your XML file, uh, as well as any of the assets that you want the widget to display uh, into the folder where you published your Captivate project. Um, this is something that needs to be done manually. Uh, you need to do it as well if you have a SCORM package that you upload to an LMS or deploy in other fashions. Um, so remember, copy the XML file, etc., um, to the location where you published your file. Um, that should be more or less it. And of course you can go back and change the properties as you please. You can switch back to the default colors really quick like doing that. And now we're back again. So I hope um, that you'll find this widget useful and um, thanks for watching.